So far, we have determined the pH of buffers when you were given concentrations of the weak acid and its conjugate base. And we've done that by either setting up ice tables or using the henderson hasselbach equation, which just as a reminder, the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of base over acid. And uh, <clears throat> so in this case here, we are asked to prepare a buffer that has a certain pH. And so that may be important because you want to run a reaction that's more efficient at a certain pH or you're monitoring a system that has to be at a certain pH. And so if you're preparing a buffer, you can assure that your reaction occurs according to plan. And uh, so we already know that if we have a mixture, a 50-50 mixture of base over acid, that the log of 1 is equal to 0, right? Because the log is just to what power do I raise 10 to get that ratio here, right? And so in this case, if it's 1 to 1, 10 to the 0, right? And so in this case, the pH equals to the pKa. Again, that is if the acid and base concentration, A minus, is equal to HA. So if, I, uh, if I'm given some choices here to prepare my buffer, uh, and I may just give you the entire table and you, you pick the pKa's, and I'll provide you with the pKa's, but it's probably easiest to pick a, uh, a weak acid that has a pKa that's very close to what we're looking for. So all we have to do here is we have to raise the pH by 0 0.51. So what that means is we want that conjugate ACE acid base ratio to we want to know to what power to raise to raise 10 to to get that 0 0.51 so that's just the inverse negative log and so if you do that if you take that if you solve for x you're going to get a ratio of 3.22 so we need 3.22 equivalents of base over 1 of the acid all right, so if you weigh out, and, and it's probably a little too high, but if you have three moles, uh, 3.22 moles of conjugate base and one mole uh, of acid, then, then you accomplish that. So you can have any, any ratio that will do that. So if you, you have like 0 0.322 molar concentration of your conjugate base, and so what you want in this case here, A minus is, is generic, so you want to choose a substance like, like uh, sodium formate so you have to remember that the source of your base is going to be a salt of your conjugate base right so you have sodium formate is a source of formate which will act as your conjugate and this is a negative of course conjugate base and then you just also use some formic acid so you want to have 0 0.100 m of your formic acid. So H, uh, HCHO2. Okay, so that's how you would prepare a buffer that has a pH of 4.25. Not much to say about this slide, it's basically just the solution for your record, so you can look at that on the slides. But you do want to look at this problem here, you know, it's probably going to be on the exam, I'm guessing. Uh, it's a little different. It has you uh, also prepare a buffer, and you have, will have to choose an acid from this list above. But what makes it a little bit more complicated is you're not just told do whatever. You are told you have to use this 500 milliliter solution of of an acid uh, that has that molarity. Okay, so and it's asking you what mass of the corresponding sodium salt of the conjugate base do you need to make the buffer for? So you have to pick an acid and then consider the volume and the molarity. Uh, not a problem though, because it's just based on concepts and things you've learned in general chemistry one and two. Uh, okay, so what if we had a an acid or a base and we wanted to determine its concentration, right? You know, let's say we have some 
orange juice from the store and we want to, vitamin C is an acid, it's called ascorbic acid, and we want to know how much uh, vitamin C is in there. So, so we don't know the concentration and we want to prove it. So what you do in cases like this, and it, it works not just for acids and bases, uh, it works for many different kinds of reactions. For, and so in general, these procedures are called titrations, where you add a solution or a, yes, a solution of known concentration to something of unknown concentration slowly, and you monitor the reaction, and then you can determine the unknown concentration of something, right? So you either have to have some sort of color change. What we did in general chemistry one is we did a redox titration of iron. We added uh, permanganate, which is an oxidizing agent. It's deep purple. You may remember this. We added that slowly to an iron two containing compound, which we were oxidizing to iron three. And so as you were adding that purple solution slowly, it would disappear and turn clear but at the point where all of the iron was consumed, it, it, the, the purple color actually made it look kind of pink and you stopped and you knew you were done and then you could read the burette and that's what this is, the burette. Uh, it basically just is an inverse, it's a very long graduated cylinder that starts at zero and ends at 50 and, and you know, the reason it's long is so that you can actually correctly read the volumes of it, right? So. Uh, the volume that you add of the solution in your burette is the final reading minus the initial reading. And so if you start at zero, it's always easiest. Then if you go to 22.4 milliliters, for example, then that is the volume you've added. But the point here is that if you, if you can monitor your reaction and you know when it's done, you can do this so-called titration to determine how much is in, uh, in in this unknown solution? How much acid is in there? How much base? Or, or, or you know, as I said, it goes beyond acids and bases. Uh, for acids and base reactions, it's probably a good idea to monitor the pH, and we have things that are pH meters. And uh, <clears throat> so, it's just basically an electrode. You dip into a solution, and you get a readout. Right? This this here, you know, it says then pH. If this was water. It's not, but if it was water, you'd have a pH of seven, or in this case, we have a strong acid and a strong base in a neutralization reaction, so your pH would also be equal to seven if you were at the end point, right? And, and so we can do that with a pH meter, and uh, or there are also indicators, things that give you different colors. So, but but so for acids and bases, we have we have to be careful. There are different scenarios, right? So for strong, strong. It's it's not a problem, right? So if you have if you have reacted uh, all of if you're adding a strong base of known concentration to an acid, uh, when you're done with the reaction, your pH is going to be equal to zero. Sorry, pH is going to be equal to seven, right? Because that's when the hydroxide concentration and the hydronium concentration are equal, and we have uh, uh, no more no more sodium hydroxide and no more hydrochloric acid. All we have is sodium chloride, and we know sodium chloride is a neutral aqueous salt. So, so neither sodium ions nor chloride ions will react with water to form acid or base back, right? Because in theory, we have conjugate base and a conjugate acid here, if you look at the conjugate acid base pair. And, and, but for strong, strong, you always have a pH of 7. And if, but th that changes a little bit when you do a weak acid strong base titration, right? And that's because the salt you are forming actually contains a conjugate base, right? So if you have uh, 0 0.128 moles, and I say moles, not uh, molarity here, uh, if I have to add 0 0.128 moles of sodium hydroxide. So when I have a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio, this is completely depleted. We have zero moles left. We have zero moles of this, and all you have is 0 0.128 moles of the conjugate base and or the salt that results the sodium acetate. But you you already know from buffers and, and from the earlier lecture that acetate is a conjugate base. It will react with water to form some hydroxide. So what that means is at the end point, 
your pH is going to be larger than 7, right? So the endpoint simply means when the reaction is completed. So you cannot use a pH of 7. You have to take into consideration the, the Ka of, of your conjugate base or the, the, uh, the Kb of the conjugate base or the Ka of your weak acid. And the same is true for a strong acid weak base titration. The same idea here, we have a weak base. What we are producing, the ammonium chloride, the resulting salt from this neutralization reaction, produces a conjugate acid which will react with water to form ammonia and hydronium ions. So the pH of a strong acid weak base titration is going to be smaller than 7. Here I am showing titration curves. You can actually monitor the pH and graph that nicely. For a strong acid, strong base titration, of course, initially you, all you have is acid. You're gonna have a very low pH. And as you slowly add the hydroxide, the pH will go up, but not by much. It takes a long, long time. And right before at the end point, it starts going up a little bit. And then it just, as you can see, it's almost a linear, a straight line up. I mean, it's a straight section here where it doesn't take a whole lot to shoot that uh, pH up, right? Because at the, at the end point when you have a pH of zero, if you add just one extra drop of base, that's going to overpower the hydroxide concentration and increase your, your pH uh, drastically. So the best way to monitor is to have a pH meter so you can actually see when you're reaching zero, uh, sorry, seven, uh, but there are also indicators like phenol phthalene. We've used that before. It makes a solution turn pink when it's just slightly above seven. So we, we can use that for for titrations. And when you are in a have a basic solutions, it'll be pink. Uh, so this is a titration curve of a weak acid with a strong base. So also we have a low pH initially, right? So the acidic acid gives off some H plus which drops the pH, we can calculate that if you wanted to. It's, it's pretty low, and then as you add the base, this equilibrium is shifted to the right, and when this is completely depleted, we have that sodium acetate, and then of course that sodium acetate is gonna push your pH up. So that's shown here. Uh, so if you go over here, you have the pH listed here, so this looks like almost nine, the pH would be nine here and we can calculate that, of course. But that's something you have to keep in mind when we are working these problems. What pH do you expect from this particular combination? Uh, the opposite is true for strong acid weak base. Here you are going to end up with a pH that's less than seven. Uh, this is specific for ammonium here. It gives you a, uh, a pH of 5.25, okay. Let's take a look at how these are done in more detail. This is just uh, this is just an illustration. Uh, I explained how a burette works already. You can actually get a really nice slow drip, 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 drip. And as you swirl that, you'll see pink color, and the pink color will just dissipate. And then this is actually way, way, way too dark already. You're just looking for a really light pink. And the reason for that is if you look at the pH at which the phenolphthalein turns pink. It's actually the pH of nine. So this is this is the structure. It shows you what's happening uh, structurally here, right? And so when this bond is broken, uh, and it is broken when you have an excess of hydroxide, right? So as long as the hydroxide is reacting with the with the H plus, it doesn't go for the phenolphthalein. But the minute you have excess hydroxide, it goes for the phenolphthalein, breaks that bond, and you get this pink color and that happens to be at the pH of nine. It's not a big deal because it doesn't take a lot of base to push that up. So when you see pink, you, you know you are within uh, millimoles of, of your titration. But uh, if you want more accuracy, you have to actually use a pH meter. But titrations do work very well. This is a different indicator, right? So if we are doing a weak acid titration or a weak base titration, you may want to use a different indicator that changes color at a different pH, right? And, and methyl red is actually a, a nice one because it has you can use it's almost like a general or a generic indicator as long as you know what pH you're looking for. Ah, between two and four, I can use methyl red. 
it'll be pink or if, if I'm looking for uh, something that has a pH in the yellow range we can use it uh, this is a uh, just uh, probably don't need it strong acid strong base it just shows you here slight pink this is where your pH is a seven it's really more like nine but you see you're within very narrow range here of your volume because of that that straight line up that shoots up drastically so it's okay to use phenol phthalein this is just a chart of different different indicators that give different color ranges at different pHs and so if you're preparing uh, uh, if you're doing a titration you know what acid you have you can choose your your indicator wisely but nowadays technology we just use pH meters okay so when we come back we're gonna look at pHs of titrations at different phases and I uh, look forward to seeing you in a few